Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So today we're taking a look at the iQ11. So this is the newest phone from iQ. They are a sub-brand of Evo. And this phone goes on sale very soon, starting in Indonesia and Malaysia first, followed by Thailand, and I believe India and Singapore in the following week. So this phone is aiming squarely at the Southeast Asian market. Despite that, this phone is very, very special for me and also a lot of you guys watching maybe in the US and Europe because this phone brings four new technologies that I have not seen or tested before. And I think a lot of you guys watching this have not tested yet. So number one, this phone runs on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is the absolute newest and latest chip from Qualcomm and it's going to be used to power almost all the flagship Android phones in 2023. Right now, this is the first phone to launch with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 outside of China because in China, the Vivo X90 Pro series already uses that chip, but that phone doesn't have an international launch yet. So this is the very first international device to run on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Number two, this phone's 6.8 inch OLED panel uses Samsung's E6 OLED display technology. This is a 2K panel, LTPO 3.0, with a refresh rate of 144 hertz and animation is absolutely buttery smooth again this display technology is very new and this is one of the very first phones in the world when not to use this display technology number three the storage of this phone uses ufs 4.0 this too is a relatively new standard all the previous flagship phones that you probably have tested in the last year or two uses ufs 3.1 ufs 4.0 means it has slightly faster read and write speed number four the iq11 also comes with the vivo v2 chip so this is vivo's own imaging chip to handle all the image processing and if you follow my channel or if you follow smartphones in general you would know that vivo's v1 chip is the main reason why the vivo x70 pro plus was such an awesome camera so the v2 chip is the newest version of that chip again the only other phone in the world right now using the V2 is the Vivo X90 Pro Plus, which is not out internationally yet. So for all of us outside China, this is again the very first taste of Vivo's newest imaging chip. So these are four hardware things that I think everybody who follows Android smartphones will be excited about. It's worth paying attention to. And the iQ11 being the very first phone to offer all four of these things to most of us watching it's quite exciting like i've never seen an e6 panel i've never used a snapdragon 8 gen 2 i've never tried the vt chip until i got my hands on this phone there's also a fifth thing that the iq11 offers that most other android phones i've tested do not offer yet this phone runs on front touch os 13 that's based on android 13. so yeah that means this is also the first android 13 phone i'm using other than obviously the google pixel 7 pro Everything else I have from the Xiaomi 12s Ultra to the Galaxy Z Fold 4, they're still on Android 12. Vivo, or I guess iQ, is beating everybody to the punch in many areas right here. Now, I've only had very limited time with this device, so this is not a review. This is just a short hands-on. So 6.8 inch, 144 hertz OLED panel looks absolutely brilliant. 1500 nits of maximum brightness, so good enough for outdoor use. Around the back, you have this uh, vegan leather finish that's grippy, does not attract fingerprints. It feels like the back of the Xiaomi 12s Ultra or Vivo X60 Pro Plus. You also have a triple camera system here. Now, the camera system is pretty good, but not the absolute best that Vivo has to offer. That would be in the X90 Pro Plus. You have a 50 megapixel Samsung GNV sensor here with a relatively large image sensor, but still no match for the one inch sensor that's in the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. You have a 13 megapixel telephoto zoom lens that can do two times optical zoom. So again, it's a fine zoom lens, but nowhere near the periscope zoom lens that's in other premium flagship phones. And then you have an eight megapixel ultra wide camera. Eight megapixel ultra wide says is all. That means the hardware here, really, it's nothing to write home about, but the Vivo V2 chip is so good at processing images I've still been pretty impressed by the photos and videos I've snapped with the phone so far. Again, very limited testing. This is not a review at all. But looking at these photo samples so far, I'm quite impressed with the dynamic range as usual. I think that's been a strong point of Vivo's V chips, particularly HDR. Right here, I'm shooting against very harsh backlight and you can see the IQ11 properly exposed the outside sky while the iPhone 14 Pro Max blows out the sky as usual. 
Around the front right here is a hole punch housing a 16 megapixel selfie camera. The phone also has a 5,000 mAh battery inside that can be charged at 120 watt speeds and the charger is included with the packaging. There's stereo speakers, haptics are excellent, and an in-display fingerprint sensor. Unfortunately, this is just an optical in-display fingerprint sensor, not the 3D Sonic Max that's been used in the Vivo X80 Pro and also the previous iQ device that I tested. So it's quite an interesting combination of hardware. On one hand, iQ is giving you the absolute latest in display technology, in mobile SoC, in Vivo's digital imaging chip, and also in storage format. However, however, the ultra-wide camera here, the zoom lens, and the in-display fingerprint reader are all a step back from what Vivo's tip-top flagship phones have offered us before. But that's okay, because I don't think iQ will be selling this phone at premium tip-top pricing. Yeah, I don't know the official price of the iQ11 yet, but if I have to guess, I would say in the 600 to 750 US dollar price range. That puts it in the upper mid-tier phone range, but not quite like a 900, 1000 dollar phone range. And I think at that price, you're getting a lot of new technology. And even if you want something more, there's the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. That's the phone to beat, I think, for the next half a year. I'm excited to test that out. In the meantime, this is like an appetizer to give us a taste of the Vivo V2, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and this freaking stunning 144Hz OLED panel. So that's about it for this really short hands-on. I'm going to have more content on this in the next couple of days as I test the phone a little bit more. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets and smartphones, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.